Is it necessary to apply a derating factor for direct buried cables in the same trench? If so, what is the minimum spacing required between direct buried cables or ducts for circuits rated under 1000 volts to avoid applying a derating factor? Additionally, what are the best practices for considering earth movement in underground installations? Hello everyone! In this video, we will continue our exploration of section 300.5, focusing on essential guidelines for installing conductors of the same circuit, whether in parallel or isolated phase configurations. We'll also dig into direct buried installations and strategies for managing earth movement. Join us as we dig deeper into these important topics to enhance our understanding of safe and compliant electrical installations. Section 300.5, I, Conductors of the Same Circuit All conductors belonging to the same circuit, along with the grounded conductor and any equipment grounding conductors, must be installed within the same raceway or cable. Alternatively, they may be installed in close proximity within the same trench. In this section, it is stated that all conductors within the same circuit should be housed in a single raceway or cable. This practice preserves circuit integrity and simplifies the identification of conductors during troubleshooting or maintenance. Grouping conductors minimize the risk of electromagnetic interference and potential voltage imbalances, thereby enhancing the overall performance of the electrical system. This includes grounded conductors, usually neutral, and equipment grounding conductors, which provide a path for fault currents, both must be included in the same raceway or cable. By including these conductors together, effective bonding is achieved and ground loop issues are reduced. In the illustration shown in Trench A, all circuit conductors, grounded conductors, and equipment grounding conductors are installed in the same raceway, and comply with the provision of this section, however, in Trench B, the equipment grounding conductor and grounded conductors are not installed in the raceway with circuit conductors, for some reasons is not possible to install all conductor in one raceway. This is a violation of this section. If it is not possible to place all conductors within the same raceway or cable, they should be installed in close proximity within the same trench. As shown in the illustration of trench C, while trench D violates this section, the conductors must be routed closely together. Why is it important that all conductors must be installed in close proximity within the same trench? It is important to maintain circuit integrity and expose them to similar environmental conditions. Keeping the conductors close helps ensure they have comparable thermal and electrical characteristics, which is essential for maintaining balance and preventing overheating issues. If the conductors are directly buried, do the rules for adjustment factors apply? The answer is yes. Let's refer to the ampacity table. Table 310.16 outlines the ampacities of insulated conductors with no more than three current-carrying conductors in a raceway, cable, or directly buried. The commonly approved types of direct burial cables are type use and UF. According to the table, if there are more than three current carrying conductors, the adjustment factor must be applied, as noted in the table. Note number 2 states that section 310.15, C, 1, should be referenced for installations with more than three current carrying conductors, and section 310.15, C, 1, specifically addresses adjustment factors. 1 more than three current carrying conductors. The ampacity of each conductor shall be reduced as shown in Table 310.15, C. 1. Where the number of current carrying conductors in a raceway or cable exceeds three, or where single conductors or multi-conductor cables not installed in raceways are installed without maintaining spacing for a continuous length longer than 600 mm, 24 in. Each current carrying conductor of a paralleled set of conductors shall be counted as a current carrying conductor. Exceptions. Number 1. Conductors may be installed in parallel within raceways, multi-conductor cables, or directly buried single conductor cables. Each raceway or multi-conductor cable must contain all conductors belonging to the same circuit, including the equipment grounding conductors. Additionally, all directly buried single conductor cables should be placed in close proximity within the trench to other single conductor cables in the same parallel set for that circuit, including the equipment grounding conductors. Exception number one provides considerable flexibility by permitting an underground circuit to be arranged in parallel using two or more raceways, multi-conductor cables, or multiple sets of single conductor cables in adjacent trenches. In these cases, each raceway must contain one of each phase leg, a grounded conductor, if applicable, and an equipment grounding conductor. In the illustration, trench A shows that both raceways contain the circuit conductors A, B, and C 
along with the grounded and equipment grounding conductors, which comply with this exception. In contrast, Trench B does not meet these requirements. Meanwhile, Trench C features direct buried single conductor cables installed in close proximity to one another within the trench. This practice ensures that all conductors in the same parallel configuration maintain similar thermal and electrical characteristics. What is the minimum distance required between two cables or ducts to ensure they do not affect each other or require an adjustment factor? I've searched the code but could not find any specific rules regarding the minimum spacing for cables or ducts in underground installations for circuits of 1000 volts or less. The only guidance I found is for conductors rated between 2001 and 35000 volts, specifically in section 315.60 D3. According to the figures in this section, the minimum distance between cables is 600 mm (24 inches). If conductors are installed in ducts, the minimum distance between cables is 190 mm (7.5 inches). This distance is considered safe and conservative. However, reducing it may be acceptable with proper justification from an engineer. For exception number 2, the installation of isolated phase conductors, polarity conductors, grounded conductors, and equipment grounding and bonding conductors is permitted in non-metallic raceways or cables with a non-metallic covering or non-magnetic sheath. These conductors may be placed in close proximity when run in parallel, as allowed in 310.10 g, provided the conditions specified in 300.20 b are met. Exception number 2 permits the isolated phase configuration of underground circuits by using multiple conduits. Phase A conductors in one conduit, phase B in another, phase C in a third, and grounded conductors, if applicable, in a fourth. An equipment grounding conductor may also be placed in a fifth conduit. However, this arrangement is only allowed when the conduits are non-metallic and kept in close proximity, as specified in section 300.20 b. Isolated phase installations inherently pose a risk of overheating, which must be carefully understood and managed. In the illustration shown in Figure 1, when an isolated phase enters a metal enclosure, the metal enclosure can become hot due to induced currents, acting like a shorted transformer turn. To mitigate this risk, it is essential to follow the methods outlined in Section 300.20 b. As depicted in Figure 2 the slot is cut between the holes in the ferrous metal. For more details on this principle, feel free to watch my video about Section 300.20 b. Additionally, isolated phase installations in AC systems inherently increase circuit impedance because the magnetic fields surrounding each phase conductor do not cancel out. An increase in impedance results in a corresponding increase in voltage drop, as voltage drop is directly proportional to impedance. Section 300.5, J, Earth Movement when direct buried conductors, raceways, or cables are at risk of movement due to soil settlement or frost, they must be arranged to prevent damage to the enclosed conductors or to any equipment connected to the raceways. Informational note. This section acknowledges the use of S loops in underground direct buried cables and conductors at transitions to raceways, as well as the inclusion of expansion fittings in raceway risers connected to fixed equipment. Additionally, it emphasizes the importance of providing flexible connections to equipment that may be affected by settlement or frost heaves. Direct buried installations are at risk of physical damage when the surrounding soil shifts due to various factors, including seasonal changes and soil compaction. Such movement can exert stress on the conductors and raceways, potentially leading to insulation failure, short circuits, or mechanical damage to connected equipment. To mitigate these risks, conductors, raceways, and cables should be installed with sufficient slack or flexibility. This allows them to accommodate minor movements without causing stress or damage. Techniques such as bending the conductors into S loops can provide this necessary flexibility. The use of expansion fittings in raceway risers is also important. These fittings accommodate thermal expansion and contraction as well as ground movement ensuring that the raceway remains intact and functional despite environmental changes. Section 300.5, K. Directional Boring. Cables or raceways installed with directional boring equipment must be specifically approved for this application. This provision pertains to the use of directional boring techniques for the installation of cables or raceways. Directional boring is a trenchless method that allows for the underground placement of utilities with minimal surface disruption making it particularly advantageous in urban environments or areas with existing infrastructure. Not all cables or raceways are suitable for installation via directional boring. 
The materials used must be specifically approved for this method to ensure they can withstand the mechanical stresses and environmental conditions encountered during the boring process.